Okay, so if there's one thing we can agree on, Manchester United, they're pretty unpredictable and to say the least, inconsistent. Hey everyone, in this video, that is FYW. And the reason I brought up Manchester United being consistent is we have no idea where they're ever going to be. I mean, where will they be in a month's time? Where will they be in a year's time? Where will they be in five years' time? And that's what I'm going to discuss today. I'm going to say what my dream starting 11 i mean it's pretty hopeful let's be honest if these are predictions these are going to be things that i genuinely think will happen in five years time and some of them as i said a man can dream now let's hope things don't go bad for manchester united let's hope Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't absolutely burn the bus to pieces and we get relegated or something stupid like that you know but you know what people are talking maybe we can contend for the title sometime soon okay not sure about that. I mean, one weekend we'll beat Man City, yes, but the next one we'll lose to Watford. So I'm not too sure about that yet. From the goalkeeper position, now oh, yes, David De Gea will be in his mid 30s. Now for a goalkeeper, that's still look. He can still play. I mean, let's be honest. Jean Luigi Buffon is like 76 and he's still going on strong. So I do. I think David De Gea will still be at United. Look, no. I mean, look, that sounds like quite a weird thing. It's not because he can't be a great United player at that age. That's the fact that in five years' time, look, De Gea has already been here for like 10 years. In five years' time, I think if we win anything, he'll say, you know what, I'm ticking that off my to-do list and I'm going to try and succeed somewhere else now. And let's be honest, if we don't win anything in five years' time, which sadly might be likely, I do think David De Gea will say, you know what, I deserve to be one of the best and I have to move to get there. So I'm going to put Dean Henderson there. Also because I think Dean Henderson is going to be such a good goalkeeper in the future. I mean, that boy is promising, let's not lie. I mean, 10 clean sheets in his first proper Premier League season as a starting goalkeeper. And I mean, the season's like only three quarters of the way done. So I think that's pretty damn promising if I say so myself. And I think in five years time, he'll be England's main goalkeeper even. He is that good. Dean Hendo, Dean Hendo is looking so absolutely promising. And I'm not going to lie, I put him in my team of the season predictions for the Premier League. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen my predictions for the Premier League team of the season so far... Go check it out in the I think you have above. Come on, I know you want to. Dean Henderson will be 28 years old and I think that he really could be United's main goalkeeper. We start off with the defence and guys, I'm not going to lie, obviously, well, I mean, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is building this team in the long run to last a very long time. And when you think of long term, I mean, let's be honest, when we think of long term relationships nowadays, I mean, we say we're gonna, it's going to be long term, but in reality, it's only really three months, isn't it? What? What does that have to do with him? No, no, he's got a point. No, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is not thinking about that. He's thinking of long term as in 5, 10 years from now. That's why he's brought so many youngsters in and that's why a lot of them are going to stay. And a huge reason I think United haven't had that much success is because the very sophisticated Louis van Gaal... Uh, a lot of times I, I use the word uh, horny. Yeah. I mean, I think he messed us up quite a bit. He sold Ferdinand, Vidic, Evra and Rafael, our four main defenders, Pretty much all together, and I think that messed us up majorly. The first one is going to be a current United player, as of many of these players on this list. It is going to be Aaron wan -Bissaka. I think he's going to be one of the best right backs in the world in the future. I mean, he currently already is one of the best. But I really do think he's going to cement his stance in this Manchester United team. I mean, he is a very strong, capable player. And I think this kind of Spider-Man is going to have many sequels to it. Unlike previous Spider-Mans, don't you know? But I mean, Aaron wan -Bissaka, his reactions are incredible, and I think he can only get better with age. Aaron wan -Bissaka, the fine wine that he is. I mean, he's young. He's only going to be 27 by then. So you know what? I think that's still young enough. I mean, that's the prime of his career and the prime of his life. And you know, many United players do well when it comes to the prime of their life. First centre-back and the first centre-back. Look, I really wanted to put Axel Tuanzebe first, but I'm not going to lie. It is going to be Harry Maguire. Look, I mean, he's the most expensive defender in the world. I expect him to live up to that expectation. Please live up to that expectation, Harry Maguire. I mean, you really do need to. I mean, five years' time, you'll be 32 years old, which I was contemplating putting in a younger centre-back like Axel Twanzer, but for 32 years old, he should still be capable. I mean, Sergio Ramos is 33 years old. I mean, I shouldn't really compare Sergio Ramos to Harry Maguire, should I? But yeah, I mean, Vidic and Ferdinand, when they left United, they were both in their mid-30s. I think that Maguire really could potentially still do that. I mean, even Evans for Leicester City, he's doing super well, the ex-United boy. He's also around that age range. I think just because he's 32, Harry Maguire should be able to do it. And I really hope that he's used his previous Manchester United season to really, you know, get more stable standings on what he wants to do at Manchester United. I think he was just using the season to see where he is. And I can only hope, at least hope for improvement this season. Second centre-back is going to be the first player on this list that is not a Manchester United player. I've put 
De Ligt. Yes, that is right. I put De Ligt from Juventus. I mean, I, we were just linked for him for so long. I, so I genuinely do think we have a strong chance to sign him. He'll be 25 years old. I mean, he's such an amazing centre-back. And I don't see him spending his whole career at Juventus. I mean, I don't want to call it a farmer's league. But it's a farmer's league. I mean, De Ligt is an amazing centre-back overall. And as I said, I can't see him spending his whole career at Juventus. I really do see him wanting to expand and improve in his career. And because United were leading the race for such a long time... Or at least we thought we were leading the race and he didn't even end up leaving us for Barcelona. He left us for Juventus. I do think De Ligt can do well if he moves to Manchester United and that's the kind of centre-back that we do need. A big, strong, powerful one and he is a very good leader overall. So I think that would be a really quality centre-back partnership between Maguire and De Ligt. I think that could be pretty dope in my opinion. I've never felt so old while saying dope in my life. What's happened to me? How do you do, fellow kids? Whether Axel Tonzebo will break into the first team and become a solid first team option, I'm not too sure. What do you guys think? Vote in the I think up above. Last centre back in this list is going to be a Manchester United boy, and it's not going to be sure. It will be Williams because damn, I think Williams is such a promising youngster in the team. I mean, he'll be 24 years old by then. I mean, that's also pretty much a prime of his career. He's still young, still got lots of opportunities. And I mean, he's such a good modern day fullback because I mean, he's just natural to it. It just comes naturally to him. He's very fast. And the only reason I currently prefer Shaw over him is because Shaw has more experience. And Shaw technically is like really, really good. I enjoy watching Luke Shaw. So at the end of the day, I do think Williams can overtake it because I mean, Shaw will be 29 years old and he has suffered with injuries. And I don't know how that's going to impact later on in his career. I mean, I hope Shaw's still in the squad, at least as a second choice option. And I mean, who knows, maybe he could move to a team like an Everton or, you know, a team like that, which I mean, I think Shaw does deserve to be obviously a Premier League uh, player. Yeah. Brandon Williams, I would love to see him really impact this first team. And I think that he could be England starting left back in a few years time it definitely is possible so yeah guys that is the defense that i do see manchester united having in five years into the midfield and a big one is do i see paul pogba staying in the team um not exactly look i'm not gonna lie we get pissed off with pogba pogba gets pissed off with us i mean if he's ever just going to have this relationship with real madrid he just really needs to go because i mean let's be honest i mean we never know whether he's staying or not and let's be honest i don't see things changing anytime soon and this isn't going to happen for five more years i mean there's no way he's going to just threaten to leave for five years and i do think he's probably going to end up moving to real madrid i mean let's be honest in five years time Cruz, Modric won't be there, they will be too old, they would have moved on probably, and Pogba will be 32 years old, so he'll probably leave. So the first midfielder I will put in the team for five years' time is Scott McTominay. I cannot do a Scottish accent, so I won't even try. Why would you do that? Scott McTominay will be 28 years old, and I really do see him becoming a really good legendary player for Manchester United. I mean, he's been here since he was a young lad with Sir Alex Ferguson, ah, the Scots together, nice. So yeah, I do think that Scott McTominay will just always remain a red. And I think he could go down as a kind of caliber player. Not necessarily Roy Keane, because Roy Keane, he was a different kind of animal, wasn't he? But a player like almost like a Michael Carrick, a really good defensive midfielder that can make history at Manchester United. I see Scott becoming an historical player for Manchester United. And yeah, as I said, Scott McTominay got a high work rate and I really do back the lad. The defensive midfielder slash midfielder I can see pairing up with McTominay because I think that we could use two defensive midfielders or at least two midfielders and an attacking midfielder. I imagine us buying Ndidi. Yes, the Nigerian, I think he would do super well with Manchester United. And this isn't just because I think he's a good player, I put him in the list. We've been linked to him multiple times, although we were linked with over 100 players in January. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just not realistic, is it? But Ndidi, I can see moving to United, especially if we do end up improving. I mean, it's kind of weird because we don't know where Leicester City will be in the future because, I mean, Vardy won't always be at Leicester City, although he just gets better with age. I mean, he'll be the best striker in the world when he's 50, <laughs> for all we know. And as I said, I don't know if Leicester City will always be a powerhouse team, but I can imagine Ndidi moving to United. He'll be 28 years old, and I think that would be very promising because the young Nigerian, I mean, this season alone, defensive-wise, has had a better season than N'Golo Kante. I think Ndidi is a solid option, and I think we need to, you know, swoop in fast before another huge team decides to buy him. Last midfielder I will put in the list as a current United player, and it is going to be 
Bruno Fernandes, let's be honest, this guy is going to be an absolute hero at United. I mean, let's be honest, he's pretty much our player of the season after only having a handful of games. I mean, you have saved our lives. We are eternally grateful. I mean, whether he'll actually be our player of the season, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be too surprised, but the man's been an absolute legend. I mean, a Portuguese legend for Manchester United. Maybe you'll fulfill the roles of Ronaldo. Who knows? Pitchy eye. Anyway, I think Bruno Fernandes has been an absolute star for United. He'll be 30 years old, and at 30 years old, you're still capable as an attacking midfielder. I mean, if anything, his mind will get sharper, and he won't quite decline yet. I mean, maybe it'll be the start of his decline, but who knows? I mean, Bruno Fernandes has been an absolute star for Manchester United this season. He has really saved us, and I've been asked the question before, do I think Bruno Fernandes can win a Ballon d'Or? If you want to know that answer, click on the I thingy up above, where I answer your controversial slash unpopular football opinions where I was asked if he would win a Ballon d'Or and I elaborate on that a tiny bit. Overall guys, I'm very happy with that midfield and I think it does look pretty good overall. Now let's get into the attack. Okay, if there's one thing Manchester United has been notorious for, it is having really good attackers. Now let's start off in the left wing position. Who would I like to have in the left wing position? I really personally would love to see Marcus Rashford in the left wing position, although Yes, he could really play striker, but he's been doing so well in that left wing position. And you have to wonder in five years' time what new youngsters will be brought into the squad. Because don't forget that players like Mason Greenwood or whoever, I mean, we had no idea who they were five years ago. I mean, let's be honest, they were just like kids sitting in their room with their door locked. Don't think about that too much. But yeah, as I said, Marcus Rashford, his numbers have been insane. And I do think he will go down in Manchester United's history the same kind of way Wayne Rooney did. I mean, they're pretty much his whole career and a true red devil till the end. Now that we've established that I think Marcus Rashford will be there on the right wing side, I would love to see Jadon Sancho there. So that is my dream right wing. The Borussia Dortmund right wing. Of course, he was from Manchester. He came from Manchester City, which I mean, oof, that would just be a little cherry on top there. Also getting a Manchester City player. I mean, his numbers are incredible. The 20 year old will only be 25 years old then. And I think, look, as I said, there's nothing I'd love more because this season alone, without the season finishing, double digits for both assists and goals. And that's exactly what we need. I mean, Daniel James had an amazing season for United. I mean, I'd love for him to still be in the squad. And if he really does rise to the occasion and becomes a great Manchester United player, even better. I mean, he's our top assist maker, Daniel James. But you know what? Just overall caliber of kind of player Jadon Sancho is a high level quality at the moment. Daniel James, as I said, absolutely love him. Weirdly enough, I had a dream about him last night. We met in a club and I don't know, I think lockdown's messing with me, guys. So those are my preferred wings and then the striker position. I mean, look, we've had some amazing strikers over time. And as I said, we don't know which youngsters will come up, but I will go for the then 23-year-old Mason Greenwood. I mean, he's 18 years old now, guys. He's younger than me by a few months, which that terrifies me. But yeah, as I said, he will then be 23, only one year older than what Rashford currently is. And I mean, I'd love to see him stay in the squad. As I said, he looks like the reincarnation almost of Robin Van Persie. I mean, I hope reincarnation doesn't only imply that he's dead and he comes back, right? But yeah, as I said, I feel like he's a new day Robin Van Persie with his goal style. And I mean, his numbers are great for an 18-year-old. I think he can really become a proper striker at United. I mean, I would have loved to put Haaland in this list or like Dembele from Olympic Lyon. But the reason I haven't put Haaland in the striking position is... Look, realistically, we're not going to get Sancho and Holland. What I think will happen is, okay, we're going to try and get Sancho because he's been our goal for quite a while now. Because we do really do need a right wing over a strike if we had to choose one or the other. Because, I mean, Martial and Radford have done pretty well, which I'll explain why I haven't chosen Martial in a second. Basically, I don't think we'll get Holland and Sancho because we'll spend so much time trying to get Sancho that if we get him, I think Real Madrid will swoop up and get Holland in the striker position. Because let's be honest, they need a striker more than we need a striker because Benzema is getting older, although he is good. Jovic didn't have a good season, so I think they'll be in a hurry and they'll get him before we can. Now, the reason I haven't put Martial in the squad in the striker position is he's already been here for like five years. I don't view Martial as being a player who will stay at a club for 10 years. I mean, I think he's a very good striker, but I think he's the kind of player that, look, if he doesn't perform, I think we'll sell him before the next five years. And let's be honest, I think if he has a phenomenal season and a big club offers him something, I think that he'll take it. I think Martial is the kind of player, now this isn't a negative thing, I think Martial is the kind of player that if a big club comes from, he'll want to go there. I think he really does want to have quite a broad CV when it comes to the clubs he's been and the trophies and accolades he's won. So guys, overall, that is my predicted Manchester United squad in five years. And I really hope it does look something like that because I mean, that'll be an absolute beast of a squad. In five years, lots of youngsters, obviously, coming through the Manchester United Academy. 
Lots of players you might have noticed aren't there like defensive wise Bailey. I mean the fact that we're not giving Bailey enough playtime, he might want to leave us. Of course, midfield wise, I mean we have players like Garner, we have Chong, we have Angel Gomez, which I mean I really do hope they Blake break into the Manchester United squad. Blake, no. If they break into the Manchester United squad, that would be even better. I mean, I absolutely love those kinds of players, but I mean Angel Gomez, I can't really see him playing over Bruno Fernandes, but I do maybe see them rotating quite a bit. But I hope those youngsters do stay in the squad. Overall, guys, tell me what you think of the squad. And please do subscribe if you did enjoy this video. I would love to reach 1,000 subscribers very soon, which we are not too far off of. And I really want you guys to be part of that journey. That would help me out quite a lot. Love every single one of you. Check the video on the side where I might slash might not have broken an egg over my head. Who knows? But guys, hope you have enjoyed this video. Click on my icon down below to subscribe. Has been fun. FY doubling glory, glory, Man United.